Hello and welcome. I'd like to introduce this tutorial on how to code model objects in TNM. My name is Jason Volk, and in this presentation, we're going to discuss how to create TNM objects in a CAD drafting environment. This is a very important step in development of the TNM model. In the examples used in this presentation, we're going to demonstrate use of the CAD platform. MicroStation version V8i, shown in this image here, and the traffic noise model, FHWA TNM version 2.5. While we're focused on developing a model case for TNM, the principles that we're talking about in this presentation really extend to other platforms and also other noise models. So while this presentation is somewhat specialized, the general principles we're talking about can be applied to other types of models. So the process we're talking about here is where the modeling decisions are made and how do I decide which objects to code and include and to what level of detail. So we're going to cover many of these topics and hopefully by the end of this presentation you'll have useful ideas on how to approach the process and more confidence and how to approach these types of modeling decisions on your next project. So before we get started, some familiarity with the TNM model is highly recommended. And this presentation is designed, assuming you've had some experience training or using TNM on a project. A good resource for review of the basic model functions is provided on the Caltrans website at this address. It's an introduction to the TNM model version 2.5, and it goes through a number of uh, topics on basic use of the model. So with that said, let's begin. So here's a high-level overview of the steps we'll cover in this presentation, and we can think of these as goals to achieve in the modeling process. So first, we'll set up the model in a CAD file. Next, we'll talk about different methods for handling elevation data for the TNM objects. And uh, this can be done using a, th a three-dimensional topographic elevation file if there's one available, but we'll also cover uh, cases where that may not be available and you only have a two-dimensional uh, contour file. And in that case, you have to use more of a manual process, but we'll, we'll go into that as well. So then, after that step, we'll import objects from the CAD format to TNM, so we can use them in the model. We will convert the CAD objects to TNM objects and perform a quality check of the modeling data. And uh, we'll check the modeling input for errors or missing information. So let's look at the types of TNM objects. To build a noise model, we're focused on selection and placement of these objects. Roadways, receivers, barriers, building rows, terrain lines, ground zones, and tree zones. So let's look at an example of a project setting and just give a high-level overview of how to assemble a model. All right, let's start with an overview of the process of coding a TNM model. So here is our example project for our TNM model in this tutorial. This is an interchange project in Northern California. This would be a type one project that increases capacity of the interchange in this example, but in this tutorial we'll focus on developing an existing conditions model because Apart from future project roads, the existing case is the model case where we assign all of our TNM object types. So let's suppose we're assigned this project. In the early phases of studying the project, we do our data requests and conduct data collection. So for a given project, the engineer will produce a set of design plans that show the geometry of what the project proposes to do in terms of the operational improvements or increases to capacity and things of that nature. So in our data collection, we naturally ask for the project plans. And the engineer provides them, and this is what they look like. We can see lane additions and configurations in the extents of the project where it terminates 
and it gives an idea of where the study area is, but it tells us nothing about the land use, topography buildings, or any of the information we need to describe where we'll do model predictions of traffic noise levels. So it's not enough to just ask for a CAD file of the project study area. We also have to specify that we need CAD information about areas around the project. So here we have a collection of CAD layers showing land use around the project. We see building footprints. We also see elevation contours. So this screen shows the horizontal layout of the project uh, with the various CAD layers referenced in. And the elevation contour file is what we need to create the vertical three-dimensional aspect of the model. This right-hand image has all the same objects as the left-hand image, but there is also a background layer uh, showing the aerial image of the study area. And it's geo-referenced and scaled to fit the, the uh, project study area in the CAD file. And if this type of information is available, it's obviously very nice to have because it just shows everything. And you can really pick these objects out and identify them. And it kind of helps to sort of ground truth your CAD data a bit. Um, so it's not, not always available, but uh, if at all possible, it's a great thing to have. And so it's worth asking for it. So here is step two of the process. Here is the CAD file, and uh, we have line work drafted in here showing the TNM objects. And we'll go into how we picked these locations for these objects in more detail later on. For the next step, we'll take line work we've coded in the CAD file and export that in a format called DXF with a .dxf file extension. DXF stands for Drawing Exchange Format, and DXF is compatible with a broad range of software products is, and is easily transferable between other CAD platforms. It's also compat compatible with TNM, as we will cover later.